Good afternoon, everyone. I'd just like to thank you for joining us for uh, the next in our series of TerraSource Global Webinars. Today's webinar will cover clinker crushers. Uh, again, my name is Joseph Paul. I'm the manager of engineering at the Pennsylvania Crusher brand. I've been uh, with the organization for 10 years as the head of design. Prior to that, I worked for 20 years in the slag aggregate and metal recovery industry in steel mills where I was an end user of crushers. Uh, my primary responsibilities here at uh, TerraSource are crusher design, project man management, and warranty resolution. Again, as I mentioned earlier, we'll be covering Pennsylvania Crusher clinker crushers. We have two models of clinker crushers, a CGU model and a CGA model in various sizes, and they are replacement models for the popular sizes of two of our competitors, the Allen Shermanhoff units, and that's the CGA models, and the United Conveyor units, which are the CGU models. Uh, they can be put in to new installations, but they are also an exact fit for the foundations and the bolting patterns of the two competitors. So we can easily replace the units that are in place there. In addition to that, we also do rebuilds of our existing installations for the PCC models only. So there's a very big rebuild business along with new sales business of this particular type of crusher. Our photo here, we're looking at a typical CGU style crusher. Uh, it's used to reduce bottom ash and clinker from industrial and utility boilers. Uh, what's different between a CGU unit and a CGA unit is where the bearings are located. In the CGU unit, which we see here, the bearings are located much closer to the frame. In this area here, here's our bearing housings right here. The other components of the crusher that you see in this picture are the breaker plates in this area here, or excuse me, breaker plates are here, the bolt-on segments are here, held on by socket head cap screws located in this area right here. There's four per segment. And then there's a maintenance door for access, or access for maintenance here in the door, and you'll see that later in some of the existing photos that we go on to later. This particular picture, which is a very busy picture, is mainly to point out where the clinker crushers are located in a typical installation. This is a pulverized coal boiler, and here you have the bottom ash hopper down in this location here, which is where our clinker crushers are located at the bottom of the bottom ash hopper. And our next slide will show you exactly where that's at. Here you have the bottom ash hopper, clinker crushers typically located in this area here. Things to note, this is typically a wet system where there's normal water levels in these ash hoppers. There are dry systems available, but most of them are wet systems. The bottom ash comes through the clinker crusher and then is pumped to a settling pond somewhere on site. Typically, we're reducing the material, the clinker, to inch and a half by zero when it's transferred to the ash settling pond. The key difference here with, with the clinker crusher and some of our other crushers is that we're not trying to produce a usable end product to a tight specification. So that makes it a little bit easier of an installation. Instead, what we're trying to do is reduce the size of a waste product so it can be transfer, transferred for disposal. So when, when we're dealing with jobs like that, sometimes it's a little bit easier to get this job and get an installation in because the specifications aren't quite as tight as with some of our other machines such as hammer mills and granulators and things like that. Again, this is a picture of a CGU unit. One of the things to note is our design is a single roll design. You've got one roll with the segments and the breaker plate. United Conveyors unit is also a single roll design. Many of the Allen Shermanhoff units are double roll designs. However, our design, even though it fits the Allen Shermanhoff footprint, is a single roll design. And then, as I mentioned earlier, the PCC units 
match up to the existing foundations exactly. So it's a bolt-in replacement for an existing unit for one of our competitors. What you're looking at now is uh, the shaft and the roll segments that are bolted to the hubs. Point out some things for you here. One of the things unique to our design is the shaft is a square design in this area. Then there's hexagonal hubs. There's two piece, pieces to the hubs. They bolt together around the shaft. The hubs themselves are mild steel construction. The segments themselves are high chrome white iron. We also have a replaceable sleeve in this area here because that's an area that gets a lot of wear in a clinker crusher. So if it needs to be rebuilt at a later date, this sleeve, which is typically stainless steel, can be replaced and you can still continue to use the existing shaft. So that's a money saver uh, as time goes on when you can rebuild these units. Here we're looking at a, at a roll shell with all of the segments bolted onto it. Again, it's a high chrome white iron segment, one of the best wear materials available. Uh, it's got a hardness of 650 Brunel. Uh, it's a hard material, but it's also the most brittle. But typically in a clinker crusher, you're not too concerned about tramp iron material getting in it as we are with many of our other crushers. So it's a very good material to use in this particular application. Our segment designs are reversible and interchangeable completely around the roll shell. So if it's running in one direction and it wears in one direction, it's very easy to change it around and increase the wear life of that particular segment. Here we have another view of the segments themselves. If you note on our design where the arrow is, we have broad square teeth. This helps us to optimize our crushing forces. And the tooth layout across the segment is also designed, as I mentioned earlier, to be able to reverse it. Some other things to note are this area here, this circular piece is a wear liner also of high chrome white iron. It's replaceable. And this area here, which you'll see in some photos further on, is the access door for maintenance, which allows you to get in and replace the segments if needed while the machine is in place. As you can see, as I mentioned, this is a picture of the unit with the access door opened. If you want to replace the segments, the four bolt holes are here. This area is tapped so the bolts can go through, and it's very easy to replace it in place rather than have to take the entire machine out to do the maintenance on the machine. It's another picture of how easy it is to do the maintenance here. Here we see the socket head cap screws here that hold the segment on have been removed. Tapped mounting holes are located here, and the hexagonal design makes the segment light enough that it can be handled by one person and dropped in place for maintenance. Uh, that's why we went with the hex hexagonal design, which you saw earlier. So it's very easy to maintain. Another view of the segments here and also the breaker plate, which is also high chrome white iron, 650 Brunel hardness number. Just to give you an example of some comparison, at 650 Brunel, some of the hammers in some of our other crushers are 475 to 525 Brunel, uh, an order of magnitude less hard than you'd find on this material. Now, the reason we have to do that in, in our crushers is because there's a much more chance of tramp material and much higher speeds, so you have to be concerned about breakage because with hardness comes brittle it becomes brittle and you're much more susceptible to breakage. But as I mentioned earlier, that's not a concern in this unit. So we can use this material, which is one of the most wear resistant materials available for crusher wear parts. What you see here is a picture of a, the replaceable sleeve that can be added and removed to protect the shaft from damage, as I mentioned earlier. It usually erodes from abrasion and corrodes from the pH levels of the slurry that's going through it. So again, it was done that way as a design with an eye towards ease of maintenance 
and an eye towards longevity of the machine, enabling you to rebuild the pieces that are necessary and to continue to use the pieces that, as many of the pieces that you can of the existing machine. What we're looking at here is a specially designed cast bearing housing right here. It's a proprietary design to us, to our company, to do, hold our roller bearings in place there. This is, again, a CGU design that we're looking at. The CGA design, the bearings are a little bit further away from the frame of the machine. Again, it's to adapt it to the foundation of the typical Allen Shermanhoff in a CGA. Here, we're looking at schematic of the bearing area and the seal area. Here you have a spherical roller bearing in this area. Here's the bearing housing, the cast bearing housing that's proprietary design that I mentioned from the earlier slide. You've got grease lubrication. Here is the seal area in this area, and we'll get a little bit more detail on the next slide. The replaceable sleeve is in this area, right here where the, sleeve, where the uh, seal is. And there's also what's known as a flinger here, and I'll explain a little bit more about what that's about on the next slide. But the seal here is designed to keep the, the abrasive material and the blaze of slurry that's inside in the crushing area from migrating out along the shaft and getting into the bearing and destroying it. So we have an elaborate seal system here, which you'll, you'll see on the next slide. And then if some material does by chance get past that, what this flinger does, it rotates with the shaft, and if, if the, the wet material gets to this, it hits the flinger and is flung out in this area, thereby preventing it from getting to the bearing. Here's a detail of the seal area. What you see here is three layers of packing right in this area. You can see the three layers of packing. There's a compression ring that holds that packing in place. These seals are designed with a water purge system. Uh, it needs a water supply that comes down here through the lantern ring, and the water is designed to purge into the machine. What you, the amount of water pressure that you need depends on the head of water that's in the area where the crusher's mounted. You need to overcome that head to make sure that any of the dirty water that's in the system remains inside the system. So it's a constant flush of water that's going into the system. The other thing to note, this compression ring is adjustable. As these packing rings wear or the landing ri lantern ring wears due to abrasive uh, material going through it, you can adjust this in to compensate for that over time. Again, most of our machines have this water purge type system, but there are designs available for clinker applications that are dry, not necessarily wet. Typically, we can supply a 5 to 15 horsepower motor chain drive with our systems. This particular unit and most of the units run between 16 and 18 RPM. We can also supply it with a direct drive if necessary, but most of the time, if it's going in as a replacement for a competitor's unit, we can reuse the existing competitor's drive, no matter what that is, whether it's a chain drive or a direct drive. The majority of our units we do not sell a drive with because they are replacements for existing units, and we can uh, use the drives that are in place. The clinker crusher models and sizes, as I mentioned, CGU, which is a replacement for the United Conveyor Corporation model, we offer it in three sizes, a 27 by 20, 33 by 30, and a 54 by 43. And that, those number designations are approximately the, op the feed opening of the crusher itself. In the CGA models, which is a replacement for the Allen Shermanhoff model, again, three sizes, two foot zero inch, two foot 10 inch, three foot zero inch. If you're looking at an existing installation of some of our earlier units, you may see some early designed CGA units that have the designation of 27 by 20, 33 by 30, 
also. Uh, in our early designs, we had not differentiated at that point between the CGUs and the CGAs. Uh, subsequently to the early design, we decided to make the differentiation uh, more pronounced and change the nomenclature of the machines. So if you're out on a, on a job looking at something that's an existing unit, you may see a CGA model that's not necessarily a two foot zero, two foot ten, or three foot zero. Again, as I mentioned, our competition, United Conveyor Corporation for the CGU model. United is a single roll design. On the 27 by 20 units, the roll segments slide onto the hub. On their larger unit, the 33 by 30, it's a segment design similar to what we have on our design. The other model, the CGA model, Alan Shermanhoff or ASH, many of their models are double roll design, which include four bearings. Again, ours only has two bearings, so four bearings, it's additional maintenance issue, and they do not have an access door. Some newer Alan Shermanhoff models are single roll designs, but the majority of their older ones are double roll design. And again, with the double roll design, the rolls are much smaller than the rolls that are in our single roll design. As I mentioned, even though it's a double roll design, our single roll design is an exact match to the foundation and will bolt up to the existing installation. A couple of things before we get to the questions. We do a fair amount of business on rebuilds for the units we have in place, and typically we can reuse the frame and liners. Uh, we rarely replace all the segments. Normally we just replace segments that have broken teeth. The bearings, the seals, and the hardware are always replaced because these are the critical items. Sometimes the shaft is replaced if it's got enough erosion where the segments don't fit correctly on it anymore. Typically the hubs are reused. Flinger is sometimes replaced. And then at the end, the machine is repainted and relabeled. Right now, the majority of our units are in domestic applications in the United States, although there are some outside the United States. Probably somewhere in the neighborhood of 100 machines in service right now of differing designs, different, pretty much evenly split between the CGU and the CGA units. That's a brief overview of what's available in a clinker crusher line. If anyone has any questions right now, if they'd submit them, I'll try to answer them as best I can. If I can't answer it right away, we can get back to you and answer your question in detail. I do have one question here. You mentioned a lot about the design differences between the CGA and CGU models. Are there any differences in regards to their applications? Not as far as I'm aware. I, they're both used in the same application, which is in bottom mash preparation on pulverized cold boilers. I believe both Alan Shermanhoff and United Conveyor Units are used in many different applications, in many different installations. But as far as the preference of one design or the other, uh, there really is no difference. The internal crushing areas are very much similar. Like I said, they're both single roll designs, and there's no real tight technical specs. So there's, you're really only trying to reduce the material to the point where the slurry can be pumped into the settling ponds. Any other questions? We have sold these on different applications, you know, primarily coal-fired power in the past. And it's been a uh, – would you say most of your business currently is, is – working on and refurbing existing clinker grinders that you have sold or have you sold is there are you still sent, sending selling quite a few of these uh, new into the marketplace replacing these Allen Sherman and UCCs worse I would say based on what I've seen it's a, it's a pretty much even split we see a lot of rebuilds but we're also selling new units into some of the installations uh, because it's been such a, a cold winter and, and probably a lot of the coal-fired plants were running overtime this past winter, we're hoping to see some of this business pick up over the next few months. I don't know if you've seen that in, in your customer areas, but 
to get back to your original question, it's about an even split between new units and rebuild. Is that right? What would you have ballpark how many how many units in thirteen you guys sold new into the utility marketplace? Because I, I I'm I, sorry, I, can you say that I, again, Doug? The, the number of clinker crushers sold new, you know, obviously new by by what I mean by that is is there's a there's an existing UCC um, you know, three of those under um, under the boiler and you replace one of those wholesale. I mean, that's most of what your orders are, right? Retro at an existing power plant? To the best of my knowledge, yes. I don't know which ones were were introduced as new to replace an existing unit or whether we sold them new and they were the original unit. I don't have that information. Oh, okay. But okay. From, the, from the standpoint of how many of each unit, I've got the numbers here in front of me. The CGUs, we've got 63 of those in service. CGAs, there's 74 of those in service. And then the early CGA models, there's uh, 18 of those in service. I missed the beginning part of that. Could you? What's the, uh, the, the difference, again, between the early and the more recent design? The early CGAs, they'll have a designation as a 27 by 20, a 33 by 30, or a 36 by 30. That will be changed. That was changed to CGAs now are two foot zero, two foot ten inch, or three foot zero inch. Okay. Uh, because we we differentiated the line after we got into the business. So a CGA was typically for an Alan Sherman Hoff, and a CGU yes. was only for a United. Some of yeah. the early ones were were kind of hybrid machines. I see. I see. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, if there if no one else has any questions, again, I'd like to thank everyone for joining us today. If you want to go back and listen to the presentation, it will be available on our website and on YouTube. So if, if there's something you missed, uh, you can always go back and, and listen to it again. Or if you have a question and you want to send it in to me, uh, Joe Paul, jpaul at terrasource.com. Uh, we'll get an answer back to you just as quickly as we can. Thank you very much.